So what happens when you pack in a zone or two, three, or however many, and you get pulled over by the cops? Well, that happened to me. All right, and I'm not going to tell you what exact year, but it wasn't that long ago. It's definitely outside of the statute of limitations. Police were watching. But anyway, so here, here's the story. All right. It's winter time, or it's just getting into winter. All right, we're getting the first cold front down here in South Texas. And uh, I remember sitting in the living room, organizing my money, a few thousand dollars, whatever the case, and ones, fives, tens, twenties, and so on. So on. I hated that, man. That's one part that I hated about having cash like that is is counting it, organizing it, and all that shit, man. Because you lose your count. Anyways, let me, let me move on with the story. <laughs> Um, ooh, excuse me. I'm waiting on my buddy Roger to pull up to uh, take me to meet up with the Connect, right? Roger was a good dude. He was one of my OG smokers. He helped me come up in the game by bringing me, uh, you know, his customers, not his customers, his, his friends that smoked. Their friends bought their friends, so on, so on. So, shout out to that dude. And uh, he also didn't look like your typical crack monster, you know what I mean? Dude, you know, kept his, his hygiene up. You know what I mean? He ate. Had a pretty decent car. Wasn't anything too fancy. So he didn't stick out is, is what I'm getting at. Normal looking dude. And uh, anyway, so I gather up all the money that I had sitting there. Boom, boom, boom. Get everything real quick. Jump in the ride. Tell him what's up. Um, Alright, look. We're headed to the usual spot. We're going to meet up with old boy. Get that and we'll come back. And Roger was like, whatever. Whatever you want to go. Because I, I, I took care of my, my people, you know what I mean? I, I took care of them pretty good, man. Just for a simple 15, 20-minute ride out somewhere, I'd give them a 40. On the way back, I'd give them another 40. So they were, they were happy for, you know, just doing little jobs like this. But, oh, boy, this turned into something else. I'll tell you that right now. And um, now we had been going to this spot. You know, we had been going, you know, all week. Past two weeks, maybe. And we never had no problems. You know, it was a fast food joint. And, uh, and we've we done it a few times. You know what I mean, ain't, ain't nobody say nothing. So, you know, we thought we were in the clear. So I kicked back. I crashed out. I had just popped a couple of Zannies. So, you know what I mean? I was I was enjoying my, my little high or whatever the case. So I tell Roger, you know what? Just wake me up when we get a little bit close by. That way I can call a boy up. I said, cool. You know, Roger was a good driver. I didn't have to worry about him getting in no wrecks or nothing like that. So, uh, we're driving, and, uh, he wakes me up, and we're about five minutes away from the location, and I call boy, I tell him, hey, we're finna pull up, you gonna be there? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there, just call me when you get there, like, alright, cool, and I never had no problems meeting with old boy, he'd usually, you know, be pretty quick, so I get there, and he's not there, so I call him, hey, bro, I'm here, okay, I'll be there in about five minutes, alright, so I sit, and I wait ten minutes, Still don't show up. I call him again. No answer. Damn. So I wait about another 5-10 minutes. And you know, at this time I'm already feeling spooked out. You know what I mean? Like we're sitting here at this fast food place. We ain't got down to order no food. It looking suspicious as hell. You know what I mean? So I call him again. He answers. I tell him, hey bro, look, I'm gonna go to this convenience store over here because you know I've already been here for a while and you know I'm just feeling uncomfortable. No, no, I'll be there, I'll be there, just, just sit tight, sit tight. Damn, alright bro, I, I'll be here. So, another five minutes pass, and finally he pulls up. You know, we handle our business, whatever. Ain't nothing seem out of the ordinary, ain't nothing seem fishy or nothing like that. He gets in his car, I get back in Roger's car, and we take off. And you know, I've done this a few times, you know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't just, you know, my first rodeo, so I, I wasn't... There were no other nervous or nothing like that. You know, like I said, I'm still on that Zanny high. And I tell Roger, hey, I'm going to crash back out. You know what I'm saying? Wait till when we get home. So I kick back, close my eyes. I'm holding the work in my hand. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, always keep that work in your hand. So it's in your control if you ever get pulled over or whatever. And um, I kid you not, man. It's about five minutes. I open my eyes just to look at where we're at. And the first thing I see is the dashboard lit up with red and blue lights flashing lights my heart dropped but first thing i did was okay i gotta get rid of this dope you know i mean it was a good amount of dope so it's not like i could swallow it or anything so i started reaching behind the little center dash 
uh, the center console <laughs> and there was an opening but it was on on my buddy's side I said screw it man I gotta do it. I didn't tell him though man and, and I wasn't trying to get him caught up nothing like that I swear to God but I panicked it was the first place that I knew that I could fit it in so I shoved it in there all right and I don't even look at Roger I'm in straight survival mode so the next thing I gotta do is a certain situation all right so I look back I'm expecting to see one cop car problem is I don't see a cop car I see a whole parade of cop cars matter of fact there's three police cars and two SUVs all lit up it, it I, I can't even find the words for it the only thing that I could say was it was unreal you know what I mean time slowed down I didn't even know what to think of the situation everything was just happening I was observing but there were no conscious thoughts in my head you know what I mean so, uh, so in to, I look uh, over, Roger asked CBS him, CBS or something like that. I so, can't even remember where exactly we were at. That was something that the cops were laughing at me about. Uh, I thought I was somewhere else. Anyways, man. Um, so we pull in and, you know, a normal police interaction, you know, they, they walk up to your window, knock on a thing, whatever the case. They ask you for your driver's license, registration, and then they get with the questioning. That didn't happen here. These cops ran up. I'm talking uh, quite a few cops ran up, guns drawn, screaming at me, telling to put my hands up and put it on the ceiling or roof, whatever the case. And I'm freaking out, man, because, like, it's a big reaction for, you know, I I didn't know what I did. I mean, I knew what I was doing. I, I knew that I, did, I knew I was breaking the law on a daily basis, you know, committing felonies, doing what I do. But they didn't know that. You know what I mean? So I thought, like, okay, maybe they got the wrong guy. You know, maybe they think we did something that we didn't do. You know, I, I don't know what's going on. And I, my, my questions wouldn't get answered anyways. Because as soon as, you know, they open the door, they grab me, throw me against the cop car, frisk me. And I try to turn around and ask them what's the problem. I get my face pushed back into the, the, the roof of the car. And then I get dragged to another cop car. Yeah, you know, and I don't know where Roger's at at this time, man. They, I guess they did the same thing to Roger. I guess they put him in another cop car. So I'm sitting there, helpless. I'm watching these cops tear up the vehicle, and I know what's in there. You know what I mean? I, I got, I got a big old felony in there. I got a good, you know, few decades worth of my life hitting in there. Where they find that, and uh, the only thing that I could think to myself was, damn. I'm gonna get dope sick I kid you not and you know that kind of sobered me up a little bit because I realized how bad I was in my addiction you know I mean at that moment I realized I said look I'm not even worried about going to prison I'm worried about getting sick I said you know what maybe I need this you know I'm not doing nothing out here I'm just selling dope shooting dope I'm not doing no good for myself maybe I need to go to prison get my mind right I said you know what whatever happens and that might have been the Zannies talking, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. So, uh, you know, I'm sitting there watching them tear this vehicle apart. And I'm talking about they were taking out the tail lights. They were taking out the, uh, you know, they were they were just checking into the hood everywhere. Anywhere you can imagine, they were checking. And I, I knew they were going to find the work. So I just slumped down and I said, screw it, man. And I just watched them do what they do. And after, you know, a good 45 minutes to an hour, maybe, they, um, one of the cop walks up to me says that we're gonna be letting you go here in a few minutes and he pulls me out of the car uncuffs me and i tell him told you you had the wrong guy and he says nah we had the right guy just at the wrong time i said all right bro well am i good to go he said almost he's like we got to take some pictures of you i said some pictures i said what do you mean i said well let me ask you this man who's, who's gonna see these pictures he said well maybe the judge maybe the grand jury maybe the prosecutor maybe the I said okay I, I, I get the point so I said you know what I'll take these pictures but I want to look like a good guy in these pictures so what do you mean I said I don't want to look like a criminal I said, let, let me let me take the picture let me let me do a good guy pose so right now you know the cops are around us and they're all laughing you know what I mean so I give them the most goofiest cheesiest smile and do two thumbs up like uh like you guys can't see me but it was <laughs> it was cheesy in the mud I, no way. they're gonna see that picture they're gonna be like no way that guy's a dope dude. look at him he's too happy he ain't no thug he ain't no gangster look at him and then they start laughing and i'm laughing because like dude i got a whole lifetime worth of work in my car and we're all having a good time nope and they're like okay now do a bad guy pose 
So then I give him the most meanest, evilest pose I could possibly give him on this side of the Mississippi. And, you know, they laugh, and I laugh. I'm like, yeah, you stupid ass dude, whatever. So, like, all right, well, uh, and I said, well, hold on, hold on. What what you pull this over for? Like, go. Oh, have a good day. I said, you ain't going to answer. I said, well, you know what? Bottom line is, I told you you had the wrong guy. One of the cops, one of his gang unit officers. Matter of fact, that's who was that's who was pulling me over the gang unit. They're like, oh well, we didn't uh, pull over the wrong guy. We got the right guy, just at the wrong time. I said, man, whatever, bro. Nah, I didn't say it like that. And I was like, okay, well, that's what you think, guys. You know, sorry about all that. Da 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 da. You know, just basically, I'm basically kissing ass because I, you know, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they're trying to look at me for clues that I'm hiding something or you know what I mean I don't know what's going on so I'm trying to play as nice as possible I wasn't cussing them out like I wanted to I wasn't tripping on them or throwing it in the face that they couldn't find it you know what I mean I just want to get the hell out of it you know in retrospect I think I was just trying to get them to believe that I wasn't the person that they were thinking that I was you know what I mean I was trying to be super cool so that way you know this is the end of the investigation they walk away with no suspicions but uh that didn't work out too good but anyway so we jump in the car me and roger don't say nothing on the way back we're both freaked out matter of fact i don't even want to reach down to see if the works there you know what i mean and uh so we pull up to my house and without my buddy seeing it i'm i'm reaching to the spot that i had to work in because <laughs> i didn't want him to know man i would have felt bad just him knowing that i stashed it right there but like i said I wasn't trying to get him in trouble, man. I was just panicking. And I just stuck it wherever it fit. You know what I mean? And I, you know what I mean? Anyways, I ain't got to explain myself. <laughs> Anyways, so I get the workout, man. And uh, it's there. I'm like, oh, thank God it's there. And, you know, I get inside and I'm telling my buddies, telling my brother what happened. You know, I'm getting the cooking and this and that. I, and I decided to get on Facebook, update my people what's going on. But I said, you know what? Screw it. I got a special message. F, F the gang unit, da 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 da, da. y'all stupid, y'all didn't find it in between the seats, and blah, blah, talking all this crap, right? I mean, they weren't looking at my stuff, so who cares, man, I just wanted to vent. Well, uh, kind of find out, a couple of days later, they, same gang unit, pulled me over again on a different side of town, but this time I wasn't doing nothing besides going to get something to eat. And, uh, you know, they did the same thing, they spent 45 minutes to an hour tearing up my vehicle. And, uh, they didn't have nothing, so, you know, before they let me go again, he told me something that chilled me to the bone. Uh, somebody told us that you were talking crap on Facebook about us. And then he went along to mention the words that I had said verbatim about them being stupid and not finding, uh, the work stash between the seats and da da da, da. And I told the man, bro, I said, you want to be following me on Facebook, you might as well send me a friend request. Oh, well, I didn't see it, but somebody told me, I said, man, bro, I don't want to hear it. Let me go. I'm out of here. Y'all didn't find nothing. I'm good to go, right? Yeah, I can move along. I said, all right. So we take off, right? Would that be the end of my ordeal with these gang unit sons of... You know what? Nope. Because I, I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen, every other day for the next month or so, these dudes harassed me. You know what I'm saying? They went above and beyond to try to bust old dub. Did they get me? Well, obviously not. But, boy, oh boy, I got some stories for you guys. But I'll save that for the next time. Anyways, if you like the story, make sure you like, subscribe, share, check out the Patreon, etc., etc., etc. And, uh, like I said, guys, if you guys have questions about cookout and all that, I mean, I don't mind answering your basic questions via email at diditdub at gmail.com. But I do have tons of videos out there that tell you everything you need to know. And if you need some in-depth help, you know what I mean? Sign up for the Patreon and I can help you out a couple times a week. You know what I mean? Personally, I can help you out a couple times a week. Can't help you out every single day because I got a few people to get to and I got my own life. But, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, shout out to old 420 Callum. Shout out to old uh, Maurice, my Patreon day one homies. I see y'all. Anyways, dub out.